uh, when we mentioned where we kind of talk about uh, gaming companies that don't exist in the same space as they used to, Rare was really, really great. And then they, they, they fell on tough times. Nintendo didn't want to buy them out. They got bought out by Microsoft. They became a Microsoft-dedicated third-party publisher. At the same time, the founding guys of Rare decided to leave the company after they got all the money from Microsoft. And then Rare is pretty much relegated to remaking old games that they put out before and making Kinect games. Does a Kinect even exist anymore? Um, nope. But well, the, the Kinect barely existed when it was out. Yeah. I mean, but the, there has not been a mention about a Kinect game since, I think, 2013. Yeah. But the reason why I bring that up is that it's very similar to another situation that happened earlier this week. On the 29th, uh, Ubisoft. Uh, had its uh, board of directors meeting where at the end of it, they had barely, very much, everybody says that they narrowly escaped being forcibly taken over by Vivendi Universal. The situation of the matter is this. Vivendi Universal, who used to be partnered up with Activision before Activision did their, their legal mumbo jumbo and dumped a lot of fucking money to buy back all of their shares and still keep Blizzard in the, in the interim, how... How Bobby Kotick did it, I don't fucking know. It's like some sort of legal voodoo. Um, but <laughs> Ubisoft isn't exactly in that same position. And Vivendi has bought up over 20% of stock to be able to, to earn themselves a commanding position in their board of directors. Well, at the end of the meeting where they, where they went ahead and, and handled everything on the 29th, they had walked away with still having their... Uh, two founding, uh, excuse me, the the two owning uh, family members, the brothers, the, the Guillermo brothers, they were still the president and and commanding CEOs uh, of the board, and Vivendi didn't inject any any of their own members into the executive board, so they weren't able to sit there and start exerting executive control over the over the company, thus starting a process where they would really be able to lever leverage things to go ahead and take uh, take over uh, Ubisoft. Now, the reason why this kind of strikes chord with me, uh, I'm really not big on, on, on corporate finances and other things, but um, I was working in Activision, not as a temp, but as an actual ATVI employee uh, at the time when they merged with Activision Blizzard, who Blizzard, by the way, was owned by Vivendi Universal back in the winter of 2007. I remember that they announced it out that they had done the merger. People were logging in during the Christmas break into their, into their email to sit there and check to see, okay, I can't remember if I'm coming back this Thursday on the 3rd or the 5th or whatnot after, after Christmas break. Let me go ahead and log in. The only thing that they saw when they logged into the corporate website was a splash page that says, Activision is now Activision Blizzard. Hmm. Suffice it to say, when everybody started coming back to work, we had a lot of fucking questions. So I, I can just imagine how these Ubisoft people are, 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 are thinking right now. They probably have a lot on their mind and they're, they probably have a lot on their plates and they're probably worrying, is my position going to become re redundant? And it's not just the people who are like in QA and, and, and engineering and stuff like that. I can bet you dollars to donuts. The people in that CEO, that, that executive board meeting, they were sweating fucking bullets. <laughs> All right, because all of a sudden they had the suits from Vivendi right there in the same fucking room saying, yes, we own part of this shit. Yeah. You know? What are your thoughts, guys? I, I, I find it intriguing myself. You know, I, I want to go ahead and see what your thoughts are. Uh, I can't, I can't <laughs> I mean, even. With, with Ubisoft, you know, I, it used to be such a great company. You know, it used to be... <laughs> Dependable games that you know were good. Um, for example, you know, I mean, it's okay to have a an IP that really took off and to milk it, but it gets to a point where you make an IP for basically what I'm saying is Assassin's Creed. I mean, they put out an Assassin's Creed on a yearly basis, and it just went, it really went to crap, you know, with. Uh, um, Assassin's Creed Unity, you know, they put out half-assed games, and then the Splinter Cell um, um, video game, you know, it started really getting crap. So, for me, um, I 
I personally think that Ubisoft needs a breath of fresh air, whether it's a a hostile takeover or one of those takeovers that, okay, I own 20% of your company, so I deserve to put somebody in the executive positions and start pulling a little bit more weight and have a little bit more say so and think to maybe change uh, the direction of the company. Because right now, Ubisoft, I really think that they need a breath of fresh air in there, new perspective, a different perspective. And because in recent times, Ubisoft put out, has been putting out crap games. But um, I've been fortunate enough to actually be part of an agency that haven't had a takeover or a, a buyout. So I don't know how that feels. But I can only assume, you know, that for those people that are in those situations, that every day you look in your locker and, you, and if you see a pink slip, you know what I mean? I mean, I can only imagine that. You know, every day you go to work, I don't know if I'm going to have a job the next day. How am I going to tell the wife when I get home, hey, I got laid off from such and such. So I have really no input to say about that. But like I said, as a gamer standpoint, I would, I, I really think Ubisoft needs to um, put more people or somebody needs to come in there and clean house and put, breathe the different fresh air into the company and maybe they can put out some better games. And they could be what they once were. That's just my opinion. I find it interesting that you think a brush of fresh air equates to a hostile takeover. And well, it's not really uh, funny. Really of, of hundreds of people. But <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't. There's a, well, there's a difference between hostile takeover and a, you know, one of those takeover. Well, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? They, since the last couple games that they put out has been shit, I don't give a fuck to be honest with you. So I mean, I, I know that there's people that work there and they rely on their job, but I mean, some change. Yeah. What about you, Theme? What, what sort of breath of fresh air could you suggest? Could, could I don't think there there is any at this point. I mean, oh god, you you have this situation going on with Ubisoft. Do you actually think that this is going to improve the situation as far as them bringing out great games? Or is this going to basically be the beginning of the end? That's the thing. You know, the, the, the thing with Ubisoft is that, uh, like, like Grey Mouse was saying, is that they've had certain IPs. And the reason why the IPs came to the fore and were actually good and acclaimed and, and commercially well received was because they let them cook long enough and develop long enough to go ahead and actually come out. Right. Um, then they tried over the last few years, they've been trying to do the EA and Activision thing where let's go ahead and recycle this and have it come out on, on a yearly basis. It ah. doesn't work that way, especially not with it's one thing if all you're doing is you're running around and you're trying to shoot people in the fucking head. Okay. Um, but if you're trying to go ahead and have a, this deep interactive experience that in, involves exploration, involves stealth, involves interacting with other people and, and NPCs and everything, it takes a little bit more effort. The, you know, so that really doesn't work out, whether it be, um, you know, uh, Assassin's Creed or, or Splinter Cell or what was the last one that they put out? Um, Tom Clancy. Yeah. The, 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 uh, what is it? Fucking ah, geez. I'm going to remember. Oh, uh, Vision? Yeah, the division. You know, you know, it, it was kind of, it was kind of rushed. It didn't have the 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 real good polish that you were expecting. Or, or Watch Dogs, the first Watch Dogs. It didn't have oh, the real, God. real, uh, real good amount of polish. And that kind of also, you know, bleeds over to their way that they handle PC games in general. Because yeah. you, you know, you play has been a piece of shit from the very fucking beginning. Yes, where. Absolutely. You know, people sit there, they're playing these fucking games, even if they like them, if they sit there and they, they, they hook up to Uplay and they're wondering whether or not their save data is going to be there, you know, that's, you know, the whole reason why I haven't picked up a lot of games for, for the PC from Ubisoft is because it's connected to Uplay. And every yeah. time I see that it's connected to Uplay, and I look through the community comments and they say, my shit is, has disappeared, yeah. my only response is, fuck that shit, I'll be right here. You know, I, 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 maybe I sounded harsh, but 
Ubisoft, whether they get taken over or not, there needs to be a change. There, there does. I mean, Ubisoft used to be synonymous with a good game, especially the Tom Clancy's, the Splinter Cells, with some of the best espionage. I mean, they were neck and neck with Metal Gear. It's just that type of level of, of games that they were. And in recent times, it, you know, the Splinter Cells just fell off. And people are like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the again, it's it's one of those deals where it's kind of funny this this whole thing with Ubisoft and Vendi. Um, like I've said in multiple videos, the biggest problem that we have with the video game industry is the fact that it's a creative process being controlled by bean counters. Okay, yep. these are guys who sit up in these corporate offices in these high towers, way above the people who work underneath them, and they're really, really disconnected. But this type of thing is one of those types of things that really shakes things up. Theme, you've been quiet for the last few minutes. <laughs> yeah, I have to say because I, only, I, I know. The you. only thing I – okay, wait, wait, wait. Because, of course, I have no idea I mean, where is this going to lead to. Is this going to be – is this going to be lead to, for them to come out with better games or even more games? Or to just do less with gaming and go to a different fucking direction like pachinko machines. I don't think that French company is gonna be doing pachinko machines. They could oh. they could they could they could. Yeah. Why not? They could oh. probably just market them and then next thing you know, they'll be popular and I, I know Vivendi has been bringing back a lot of their old classic classic titles to go ahead and re-release on Steam. I don't think they're going to be doing pachinko machines. But as far as what what they're going to do with Ubisoft, I yeah, like you guys said, your guess is as good as mine. I really yeah, don't. Know. That's what that, okay. That's what the potential worry is as far as saying okay, is there going to be a shake up or is this going to be a hostile takeover and then just get rid of Ubisoft? Just. Well, you know, a lot of the financial analysis who... Uh, anal well, we start seeing a whole bunch of Assassin's Creed bundles, yeah. then we know that they're on their way out. Well, we've already seen that. That's already, that exists already. Yeah. A lot of the financial analysts who went ahead and looked at this, a lot of them said that even though they pretty much escaped being uh, completely... Un being under the thumb of Vivendi Universal over the last, the last uh, uh, board meeting, there, a lot of them are predicting that in the next few months, the next board meeting that comes out, by that time, Vivendi Universal is probably going to increase market share or their, their ownership share of stock from 20% to 30%. And then, you know, unless Ubisoft does something really, really drastic to go ahead and change the dynamic of, of where they stand in the market, they're probably going to still be taken over by, by Vivendi. So are they going to keep Ubisoft's name or it's going to become a different company altogether? The, what they'll probably happen is that they'll probably keep the Ubisoft name and, and the brand and title and everything else because that carries its own value. Just like when Vivendi Universal went ahead and merged with Activision back in 2008, oh, yeah. um, it became it Activision be, Blizzard. It'll be a slash. That, yeah. yeah. As long as it's not Ubisoft slash EA. Well, I mean... So is the CEO of the, like you said, the French company? Are they are the CEO and the uh, brothers? Are they going to just say okay, uh, no. we'll accept we'll accept two billion dollars or whatever our company's worth and golden parachute out? No, what'll happen is that they'll do what they can to go ahead and still sit there and stay in that in that um, in that executive office. Because as long as they are attached to the executives on that board, they're still going to be making their own bonuses and everything else off of whatever the company does. Now, whether or not they're privy to whatever else Vivendi Universal is, yeah. it has um, is, is a different question altogether. But they're going to want to stay as – probably stay as long as they, they possibly can. Well, now, if it comes to the point where they do start buying things out over – Above the thing is in France, you can't own more than thirty percent of the commanding stock of a company, so they're limited by that. But the problem is, is that when you get thirty percent, that means that hey, look, if you want to put somebody in the fucking uh, executive board 
on that that those chief executive officers, you can put somebody there. There is no vote. There is no question. You can fucking insert somebody in there, and that's mm-hmm. probably what they're they're thinking is going to happen sooner or later. See, I didn't know that in the French economy or whatever that because usually in America, right? Microsoft has done this. They they took ten percent. It took twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent, and as it get more and more, almost to a point to where they own 60, 70, 80% of the company. And then, so you're the main company, the parent company does this number, and then the the, uh, the hostile company, so to speak, moves everybody from that company. I mean, if you've got 80% of the company already, you can do pretty much what you want with that company. Yeah. I mean, because the original, the parent company can't do anything about it with yeah. such small shares. Yeah, because they so have, I yeah, the shares are too small. Yep, and they have no hearsay of the situation. That it's too exactly. late. I didn't know that on the French side of things that they yeah. can only a, a, a hostile takeover is only thirty percent. Yeah, because Vivendi itself is 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 um they're located out of France. I believe uh, Ubisoft is actually located out of Canada. Okay. Yeah. Um. The like I said, as far as it goes, there there are still some steps. The problem is, is that they can. They can already insert somebody into their onto their board at twenty percent. It's just at this time they're like, okay, we're just going to let them see what they do. Maybe they're going to sit there and let them let them be autonomous for a little while. But most likely, almost everybody who's looked at the situation has said they're going to keep on increasing the the amount of shares that they own. And when it comes down to it, once they hit thirty percent, they're going to insert somebody in there forcefully, and then that's when they're going to start actually. Um, overtly exerting control over the company uh, by having somebody in there. You know? And the truth of the matter is, is that Vivendi, Vivendi Universal, they have very, very deep pockets. And Ubisoft as a whole, as just a dedicated software company, does not have deep pockets. They're deep. bleeding. Yeah. They're bleeding. You know? So they're kind of ripe for the picking right now. So who, who is it again? Say, what's the company's name again? Uh, Vivendi Universal. What do they do? Uh, they own Universal Media, like oh. Universal Music. They're also a uh, commanding share of Universal Movies. So in other <laughs> words, what I'm getting at is another company that does not have anything to do with gaming is going to insert itself into the gaming industry again. No, no, they they they've been part of the gaming industry for a long time. They 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 uh they got a hold of um Sierra Interactive a long time ago back in the 90s. And what have they put out in the recent times? Uh they have not put out things under Vivendi in the recent times, but they have they were the ones who owned Blizzard before Activision took them. Yeah. So they have very deep pockets. In fact, one of the reasons why Activision wanted to go ahead and, and merger with them was at the time Activision was riding the wave of Guitar Hero and they wanted access, free access to all of the universal music titles and music, universal artists under their, their command and their publish. And that's what they went for. That shit died out. And in 2013, like I said, Bobby Koenig, I don't know what the fuck he did, but he was able to buy back all the fucking shares. And not only did, was he able to separate Activision from Vivendi Universal, but he took Blizzard along with it. Yeah. How the fuck he did that, I don't know. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is that Blizzard is coming off of another great expansion off World of Warcraft. I mean, Legions, that, I mean, I've, I've been hearing nothing but great. That it actually re-innovated that World of Warcraft. I mean, that's another game that's been around forever. Not just it's WoW. Awesome but- but Overwatch has taken over all Overwatch, the competitive, yeah. all the competitive uh, first-person shooters. Nothing can hold the fucking handle to it right now. Absolutely. So yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I I just wish that Ubisoft would put out good games again, you know, and not these half-ass games like um, Assassin's Creed Unity, you know, and Division and stuff like that. I mean, I, you know, we said it all the time as gamers and on this channel that. We, all we want to do is just play good games. We just want to have good games. You know, just give us good games and we'll buy your stuff. Just simple as that. Yep. I mean, I just want to, I want to see them finally come out with uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 because they've been dropping hints of that. For the last that, would be, that would be great. Yep. Absolutely. 
Mm. Yeah. You know, we're really going to, this is, this is might seem a little bit outside of the wheelhouse of the middle aged guys, but like I said, I've, I've, experienced firsthand what it's like to go through a merger when Activision went ahead and did the, the whole Activision Blizzard thing and every, er, all of that. You know, they told everybody that everything was going to be fine. Two days later, I was being laid off. I was being walked out of the, uh, off the property. You know, and this is one of the type of things that, that kind of hits kind of home for me. And, you know, I, I know the other guys, the other middle-aged guys from on this, uh, on this video, they can probably relate. If they can't relate directly, they probably know somebody who, who can relate directly. You know, with that, we're going to wrap this particular video up. Uh, thank you so much for sticking with us all the way to the end of this video. Like you say, at the end of every video, if you're so kind, hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave us a comment below, especially if you think we've missed something or maybe have a different point of view. We're the middle-aged guys and we bullshit about nothing. Our bullshit ends here. I am the Reverend. The theme here. Once again, for the benefits of common sense, logic, and gaming. <sighs> wow. Merging and damn it. And taking over and just make good games if you can. That's all we ask for. Please stay a gaming company. Don't branch out to any garbage. Please, Ubisoft. Stop with the Assassin's Creed every year, too. Please. Credits. Just make good games. I don't care if you're Vivendi Universal. I don't care if you're Activision. I don't care if you're Ubisoft. I don't even care if you're EA or fucking Konami. Give us good fucking games. You make good games, we will buy.